so happy to tell you that he is here in Los Angeles this evening going to do his concert act called An Evening for Friends here at Sterling's Upstairs at the Federal this evening October 13th and tomorrow evening October 14th. Welcome again to Sterling's Upstairs. It's, well good to be here as as the performer. As this the time. performer this time he's been coming in seeing some of our shows recently which we appreciate. This so, is a good space. Thank you. You know, it's the oldest building in the San Fernando Valley. It uh, was built in 1926 as the Federal Bank, and uh, there's some great history in this room. Oh, I thought it was the Federal Prison. <laughs> it's a bank. No. Okay, oh, good. Yeah. That's, I think that's yeah. a little... Exactly, and you're, you're performing a little in... better karmically. On our stage, is the, it was the actual vault. Well, there you go. Right. So if you feel yeah. the money tonight, that's, that's where it's coming from. All right. Yeah? So we should have called it... John Lloyd Young and Eve made from the vault. <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to be doing a show this evening here at the club that you did at the beautiful Carlisle in New York, which is right. based pretty much on his beautiful new album, My Turn. We built the playlist for mm -hmm. the Carlisle and recorded the album for the Carlisle, and now, you know, but that's East Coast, and right. I live out here, and, right. and uh, all of these musicians that are playing with me tonight are on the album, we recorded it out here, and this is the first time that we're actually taking these songs and doing them live here on the West Coast. Fantastic. And I'm happy that we're doing it at your venue. And uh, we're happy about that too, but there's an interesting story about how these songs came to be for the album. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I'm, you know, not surprisingly, you know, you do a show like Jersey Boys, and uh, which takes songs from the 60s and turns them into Broadway standards, you know, overnight. And uh, uh, when one gets notoriety for something like that, they tend to be asked to do songs from that period, you know. So all of these years since uh, first opening Jersey Boys, I've been asked to sing songs from that period all over the country. And the audience has always gone uh, kind of nuts for them. And so, uh, when we got together with our music director, Tommy mm -hmm. Farragher, to do an album, we said, well, let's take the best of these songs that have been working so well, all, you know, all these things that we've been doing all over the country, and put them on one album, and put a show together for the Carlisle. And, and we did that, and we had a really successful run at the Carlisle. We've been there three times now, so it's about time that we, that we bring this show to our home base. Here. Yeah, exactly. John recently did uh, my radio show, State of the Arts, with LA Talk Radio, and he uh, made mention of the fact that this project, the album project, took five years to collectively come together. Well, there's a little bit of a, a kind of identity crisis when you, you know, you're singing songs from the 60s on a Broadway stage, and yet you're in a Broadway musical that wins Best Musical at the Tony Awards for Broadway. There's there's a, a, a genre kind of identity crisis that's, that's started on Broadway probably about 15 years ago, but now there's traditional Broadway and there's pop music finding its home on Broadway and they're both living there together, you know, mm -hmm. with like Beautiful this past season, right. and Motown, and it's now it's there to stay. And, um, and so these, these songs kind of qualify as Broadway songs, but I had to decide, am I gonna sing traditional Broadway songs or am I gonna sing rock? And I found uh, over the years that um, the, 
the rock songs, the pop songs are, are, are more accessible sometimes in places that aren't as Broadway centric as New York and uh, people always know those songs mm -hmm. though they may not know a song from Les Mis or whatever and um, you know I had a great time playing Les Mis right here in, right. in California at the Hollywood Bowl a few years ago but I had to decide where my playlist was going to go and um, it, it seemed like a better and more appropriate fit to choose to sing uh, classic songs from the 60s as modern standards you know absolutely standards you, even all these years later are understood as songs that were written in the 30s 40s and 50s and sung by people like Sinatra and Tony mm -hmm. Bennett but these songs from the 60s that were rock songs are now 50 years old mm -hmm. and it's about time that they become part of the standard repertoire too so that's kind of our project and uh, at least with the audiences that right. we're exposed to and, and with this album and, and it's um, it's been very satisfying well, it, it, these these are still lyrics that have they're not the kind of pop song where the lyrics don't have integrity anymore. So you can still get behind these lyrics as an actor mm -hmm. and still make the songs mean something because it's not just one lyric repeated over and over and over again. There's a beginning, middle, and end to these songs. There's a contained story there. And um, it's actually a really natural fit for an actor who finds himself having to choose um, what songs he's going to sing. Exactly. Now, at this point in time, I know the album is new and it's still out there. And if you haven't gotten your copy of it, should absolutely because as John because it was self-produced and we'd like to pay back our investment <laughs> so can you help us with that <laughs> there you go <laughs> little kickstarter um but the truth of the matter is what he just said these songs are american standards and 50 years later now they're being given a new thrilling uh, rendition by john lloyd young i've heard the cuts and they're pretty amazing is there another album in the works for you that you are you that point of looking ahead and seeing what's the next album going to be on? Uh, yes, but there's two things going at once. One is uh, original material, which will take longer because we want to make sure that there are the right choices and uh, writing is a kind of a new thing. And right. We were writing with Tommy, our music director, who is a songwriter already, and, um, and other songwriters. But in the meantime, perhaps working on like a My Turn 2, the songs that uh, some of the older songs that didn't make this album mm -hmm. that, that we still want to sing and some of them one of them I'll sing here tonight on, on the stage it's not on the album but it may be on the next one ah. so we've been um, accumulating a list for several years like you said it took five years to decide what we wanted our first album to be and all of those years you know we've been, I have a journal that I've been keeping mm -hmm. for like seven years now that has all these songs in it that I want to get at, and uh, so some of those are probably going to end up on it. The next album will probably be old songs, again, treated as standards, old rock songs treated as Very new nice. standards. Very nice. We are so happy that you are doing the show here this evening based on the album that uh, is so beautiful, and if you don't have it, go and get it. I've got a copy of it. You can get it easily on Amazon, CD Baby, iTunes, you name it. It's out there. John Lloyd Young, thank you for All stopping right. by Broadway World mm -hmm. TV. Glad this to is be Michael here. Sterling. We'll see you soon. Kiss me, kiss me when you